This presentation is called Operation Market Garden, Allied Military Operation of World War II, September 17, 1944 through September 25, 1944, for History 296, and I'm Michael Bonner. I thought I would take a moment to highlight the organization of this presentation by using an agenda. As you can see, I will be introducing this presentation with a brief discussion connected to the outlining details of Operation Market Garden. Then I will continue looking at the specific events leading up it to the operation itself. Furthermore, I will also address the operational failures of this mission along with discussion around possible preventions. Lastly, I will be tying the presentation together with a variety of concluding thoughts. Operation Market Garden demonstrated being the largest airborne military plane in history as well as integrating ground troops too. In contrast to U.S. General Eisenhower's broad plan, British General Monty Montgomery and his narrow plan was an aggressive plan to capture key bridges on the final push into Germany through Holland. Essentially, the plan would secure routes and bypass against the Siegfried defensive line. The operation consisted of two separate forces. Number one, the airborne elements, which were designated as market, and number two, the ground forces, which were labeled garden. The plan consisted of dropping the U.S. 101st, the U.S. 82nd, and the 1st British Airborne Units along a path to capture key bridges and strongholds. This would allow the British ground forces to move north toward the final mission at the Rhine River and to push into Germany. At the time when the plan was conceived, the Allies believed they had the Germans on their heels and that the war could be ended by Christmas 1944. The first event on this timeline relates to the launch of the operation. On September 17, 1944, Operation Market Garden began. Upon that same day, the U.S. 101st Airborne Division was chosen to secure points at Eindhoven and clear the way for the ground troops to move up the long highway. From there, the U.S. 82nd Airborne Division was dropped to the north in Nijmegen to carry out the same mission. Throughout the landings, both units accomplished their mission but were met with enough resistance to delay the mission, mission moving forward, especially at Nijmegen. At the same time, and likely the key to the entire operation, the first British Airborne landed at Arnhem with orders to secure the bridge that crossed the Rhine and into the industrial land known as the Ruhr. With this order, a direct link into Germany would have been one that could have been the deciding factor to, the end, to end the war with Germany. Unbeknownst to the Allies, the elite German force, the 9th Panzer Division, had been deployed at Arnhem. This situation had the light gun paratroopers set against a heavily armed tank division. The battle was brutal for the Allied paratroopers the moment they landed in Arnhem. The bridge was eventually taken by the 1st British Airborne, but without reinforcements from the ground troops, the British troops were cut off by the determined Germans. Meanwhile, over the course of the next several days, the British ground forces tried to make their way north on Hell's Highway, meeting up with the 101st and the 82nd Airborne along the way and confronting stiff resistance from the now well aware German military. The result was the ground forces slowing down significantly while the British and Polish troops tried to take and hold Arnhem. This allowed time to move the German panzers into fighting position in Arnhem. With reinforcements being delayed at Nijmegen and the river wall, the Allied troops at Arnhem were slowly running out of supplies and getting beaten back. Ultimately, on September 25, 1944, the Allied troops were stopped short of taking the objective and forced to retreat. 
the Allies were left with heavy casualties and even having thousands captured by the Germans. Operation Market Garden was an exhaustive failure. According to History.com, it states, Market Garden was a military disaster during which the ground force was unable to breach the river wall at Nijmegen to in time to establish a bridgehead north of the Rhine in what became properly known as a bridge too far. There are several key factors that contributed to the failure of Operation Market Garden. Intelligence and Planning Throughout the war, it seemed that the Allies had enough intelligence to know and understand what the Axis powers were doing. In Operation Market Garden, there seemed to be a failure to obtain the proper intelligence. It seems unlikely that the Allied intelligence would miss an entire Panzer division at Arnhem. According to History.com, the Allies were told in advance of the buildup at the Rhine River by Dutch resistance. Having thought the Dutch resistance to be compromised, the Allies disregarded this information and chose to attack anyway. In addition to lack of intelligence, lack of planning was a key factor in the operation. The Dutch countryside played havoc with the operation. The land in Holland is soft and not very forgiving. This put the British ground forces in an awful position. Since their goal was to travel along a two-lane highway to meet the main objective at Arnhem, if attacked by German troops, there was no way for the British troops and their armor to take an alternative route without getting bogged down in the soil. They also could not take up solid defensive positions, exposing them to brutal counter-attacks. The men in the convoy took to calling the route Hell's Highway. Optimism The Allies assumed the Germans were finished after the retreat at the Falsy Pocket, but the Germans still had to fight in them after all. The Germans were able to retreat and set up position, which were known to the Allies as the West Wall. Montgomery and the Allies also assumed, along with arrogance, that the airborne troops could hold strategic strongholds while the British ground forces plowed its way north to Arnhem. With this assumption, airborne troops were put in difficult situations which led to being outgunned and without reinforcements and could not sustain their positions. Looking back at the entire operation, the biggest mistakes were assumptions and the failure failure to plan a decisive blow to the German military. The Allies were quick to start a new complex, complex campaign without all of the proper planning and intelligence. The Allies thought they could defeat the German military by Christmas of 1944, but only prolonged the war several more months. I feel if the Allies had done their due diligence when it came to planning and intelligence, key incidents would have been avoided in the carrying out of the operation. Commanders would have anticipated issues and been able to come up with proper solutions. Possible different routes could have been discovered which, have le which would have led to the same objective. And while optimism is not always a bad trait to have, for the Allies to assume the German army was finished was a very costly lesson to learn. While some may argue that the actions of World War II, such as Eisenhower's broad plan or the invasion of France, may be the worst mistake committed by the Allies, I feel as though Operation Market Garden demonstrates the worst above others. In perspective, the operation fed into both greed and narcissism. The positioning and gain offered toward the plan's success could have benefited the Allied troops against the Axis powers. However, in discovering the depth of German involvement, proper planning would have been the stronger solution as opposed to the loss of life. Therefore, it is because of this careless loss, this operation is certainly deemed a major failure.